Okay, good morning, everyone. This is Anne Marie Band. This is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro platform, where we just discuss what's going on with the ETFs. We did see some motion as we take a look at SPY on the fifth day of May, right after the employment numbers have come out. We can see there's a lot of choppiness sitting right around this area. Notice yesterday came into the low of the prior week, began to bounce. You know, that's not textbook motion for sideways price action. I'm really not sure what is. So literally, this is what we're looking at. Sideways action. Now, who's in charge right now? That's really hard to say. Buyers and sellers are really in an epic battle right now. And in my mind, sellers are sitting in an area that they haven't been in feeling strong in a while. And so my thought is the first pass bounces into 410, going to likely be a sell zone. If it even gets to 410, we might just slog around here because I don't think anybody who's really trading the markets and knows what's going on thinks these job numbers are real at all. They're just cooked. I mean, they're making babysitters say that they are part of the, empl the employment complex, right? And, um, yeah, sure, whatever, but not not a real number. But that's all I want to say for there. Now, what's going to happen if we fade? What's going to happen? When do the sellers say, I'm ready to step on the neck of some buyers? Well, that's going to be if we bounce here and we fade and cannot hold 406. If we can't hold 406, stair step down to 405, stair step down to 403, stair step down to the 400 level. This is my thought. Now I'm going to move that 400 level maybe up to 401, something like that. Okay. But this is the zone that I'm thinking that we're sitting in a range. If the buyers come in and they get excited, because remember sometimes Fridays are trending days. If they get excited, where are they going? Well, above 409, they're going to try to get to 410. Above 410, they're going to try to get to 412. That's really what is happening here. I see a lot of negative pressure. I believe traders are really starting to get a bit more nervous, but if sellers climb in too fast and the buyers push up just a little bit and start triggering those stops, we're going to have ourselves another massive squeeze. Nothing is straightforward right now. Absolutely nothing. Okay, taking a look at the cues, we can see we're sitting here. We closed at the 316 area, so our bounce is really almost $2 wide, right? And so what this is telling us is, hey, we came into the support zone. We lost the edge dramatically last week, but we're holding it this week down at the 315 area. So what do we want to see? Well, hey, we want to hold this area, the, the close of the prior two days, right? And so this is very interesting to me. The last two days closed almost at the same area, but the wick down was lower. So what does this tell me? It tells me that there's selling pressure sitting above us. It really does tell me that. So my thought is the following. Bounces are sell zones. Those sell zones are near the top of prior resistance edges. And those prior resistance edges look like 319, 320. If we lose 317, my suspicion is we test 316 back down to 315. And then we've got heavy congestion around 313.50. That's really where all those wicks stand. Let the, if you're looking for longs, let the price fall back. And then immediately as it begins to recover, go to a tight time frame and start looking for a bottoming formation. Let's take a look at the regionals. IWM, regional banks are bouncing this morning. Um, I don't, listen, I don't normally talk about this, but you gotta go onto Forward Guidance. That's a podcast. You can find it all over the place. It's really popular. Young kid named Jack Farley does it. And it's hilarious. He tries, he talks over 
his guests to make them stop talking so he can finish his point. It's hilarious. But other than that, he's a good interviewer. But I mean, his audience is, is his, his guests are, are usually very dynamic people. So maybe he has to shout over them to, to get himself heard. But in any case, he did an, uh, an interview with Jim Bianco, who is from Bianco Research. And holy cow, what a blistering interview. You got to listen to it. It's really incredible. But in any case, here's what we're looking at. Regional banks starting to bounce. Again, folks, they're going to bounce into resistance. So the IWM, which holds the majority of the regional banks, is in a downtrend until something else happens. Okay, so here we go. Notice this is setting up as a higher low. So we could have ourselves a pretty good bounce on the recovery of motion. My thought is, I don't think so. Uh, the only reason I would anticipate any kind of very nice bounce is if the shorts get caught flat-footed because they took the trade too late in the game. So let it bounce, see if it gets up above, listen, if it gets above 173, it's likely to go to 174, 175. So once it gets up over 173, think about the long action into this area and then consider the short coming down. You don't want to short this on the low. It is way too dangerous. Levels 140, excuse me, 170. And then below that, we are looking at the 165 area, 166. Okay. That's what I am thinking of. Uh, what else do we want? That's it. That's, that's all I'm going to work with today. You know your SPXL, you know your TQQs. They look the same. We're probably going to be fairly landlocked in the range. Good luck trading today, folks. I will see you on Monday.